Hello there and welcome to Mad Doc Minis. In this video, I'm going to be making Primaris Devastators. I wanted to do this for a long time. Um, same reasons really as with the tactical Primaris Tactical Squad that I did in my previous video. I'm just not happy with the look of Firstborn Marines anymore. A lot, lot of love for them, a lot of nostalgia, but I just want to Primarisize um, my... Uh, Mike and a firstborn guy, so here we go. Lots of weapons, lots of weapons in the uh, Devastator box, which will allow me to make two full squads, having uh, 10 Hell Blasters as well to do it with. Chose Hell's, Hell Blasters because they're a little bit um, more appropriate for this, I feel. Uh, more static poses and slightly uh, heavier on the armor, so they, uh, they lend themselves well to Devastators, I think. So glue all the uh, Hell Blaster bodies and legs together first and then start making sub-assemblies of the weapons, which is the advice that's in the Devastator uh, manual, the uh, the instruction book. So you make the sub-assembly and then glue it on. A bit hit and miss, I would say. This turned out kind of okay. Um, that turned out fine. Um, and uh, what we did notice here, or what I did notice, I should say, the Royal We. Um, is that the backpacks would not go on nicely without some trimming. So I used a, a pair of sharp hobby uh, clippers here to clip off not only the nub, as you see here, um, but also the raised area at the back that needed to come off really flush with the Marine's armour in order to join the ammunition backpacks nicely um, to their, well, to their corresponding ammunition feeds because the whole thing joins up around the Marine. Um, so that was a necessary um, modification on all the heavy weapon marines. It, it just was something, you, if you wanted to do a production line, you could just do all this at the beginning if you wanted, because I didn't come across one where I didn't have to do this. So yeah, there you go. Um, once that was done, look, joins in fine. Join the ammunition feed first and then bring the backpack onto the back of the miniature just to ensure a nice fit. He came out you know really well as i said it was a little bit up and down with the uh, sub assembly uh, technique i do use another technique for the second squad as you'll see later in the video um, here the last cannon uh, went on fine the arms went on fine um, the backpack needed a little bit of alteration so we trimmed the back of the marine off but we have these little uh, i don't know these little kind of ringlets on the uh, energy coils they needed to be trimmed back in order for that backpack to fit nice and flush against the back of the marine you're not really sacrificing anything you're not going to see this much so it doesn't spoil the look or at least not in my view but that did need to happen to make it fit nicely once that addition uh, that modification was done it was fine yeah happy days uh, next up is the plasma cannon. You can see here there's a little bit of play in the arms. So that's something you can do if you, if you don't wait for it to completely dry. Give yourself a little bit of um, play with the arms there. You can sometimes get better results uh, that way. So that's something you can do if you want to use the sub-assembly um, technique. And here I'm just demonstrating what it was like trying to fit on the backpack without doing those modifications to the back of the Marine. You see, it just sits at a weird angle. Um, so, yeah, you really do need to take those, uh, shave those backs down in order for this to work. And, you know, you're not going to see any of that. So absolutely fine. You know, uh, here uh, completed. It looks great. The um, the energy feed going around the marine worked okay. We did end up with some gaps, which is where I was starting to falter a little bit on the, the sub assembly um technique uh, a little bit but i did carry on and do uh, the other weapons like it um it, for the first squad so the multi multi was done the same way that turned out um you know fine no major hiccups there as well as the uh, grav cannon as well um that went together okay but uh, I actually decided uh, after I built the sergeant, which we'll see in the next uh, bit of footage, uh, sergeant came out okay. There's lots of bits for sergeants. So I was easily able to make two different sergeants here because there's just lots of little bits uh, in there. I was really happy with this guy, actually. He looks quite dynamic, nice. It's good, good miniature. Um, I actually, for the second squad, went to just fitting the weapon arm first, much as you would do, really, if you were just gluing on a normal bolt gun you know so put the weapon on arm a uh, weapon arm on first glue that let it dry sufficiently and then bring the supporting arm in uh, and glue that and i just found that to give better results you do, i didn't have as many gaps around the edges i was able to compensate more it, it just for me that worked a lot better so i would advise doing it this way if you were going to give this a go guys um just think about it just think about them holding a bolt gun upscaled and just do it the, the normal way don't don't follow the instructions in the devastator um instruction manual is my uh, main advice and yeah came out absolutely fine uh, same thing have to trim the backs down all the rest of it 
Um, here I'm doing that again with the second multi melter. I just find that to be a better technique overall. Um, yeah, it just worked better, fewer gaps, definitely, definitely worth doing. Um, so I hope that helps. And um, yeah, I think overall they came out okay. No goofy proportions. Okay, so here they are. Here's the uh, the 10 Devastators that I built uh, using the components from the Hellblasters and the Devastator box set. But full disclosure, I actually made 13 individuals altogether because I had a few extra legs and torsos, um, Hellblaster legs and torsos from another project. So I actually built uh, three sergeants as well, which I will show you in a minute. Um, but what that did is it kind of allowed me to build two of every weapon type apart from missile launchers, which I will uh, do as part of my tactical squads. But if you want to see um, how the missile launcher turned out, uh, follow the link that I'll leave in the description to the uh, the tactical marine, uh, Primaris marine uh, hybrids that I did uh, in my previous video. That'll show you. Um, yeah, I'm not going to show you anything new really by going through all these, but what I will just do is highlight the nice variation in poses that you get. Um, there we are. So two different torsos and legs have equal two quite different poses with these heavy bolters, which is which is really nice. Just gives a bit of variation. That's not me aiming to do that. That has just happened randomly, just because because I just happened to choose different torsos, and um, I like it. I like the variation. So I actually think you'll probably get better variation from doing it this way than you would following direct instructions from the. The Devastator box set, which is bizarre, isn't it? Um, you do end up with a few gaps here and there on some of the ammo feeds, but I'm not sure that isn't worse than if you were just following the instructions straight out of the box anyway. Uh, a little bit of liquid green stuff would sort that out if it really offends you, which it doesn't really me. Um, these guys have obviously uh, had a um, an undercoat of uh, Mechanica Standard Grey. Uh, so I'm, I'm obviously developing as a content creator because now you get undercoated models. You normally just get bare plastic, don't you? <laughs> I'm getting there, guys, slowly but surely. Um, I have tidied them up a bit as well, a lot more than I would normally do because some of the mold lines on these devastated components were awful, awful, awful. I mean, and I'm someone who doesn't necessarily remove mold lines. So there you go, uh, it offended me. That takes some doing. So I have tidied them up and undercoated them, but... Um, but yeah, I, I think they turned out well. The, the proportions of the arms in relation to the rest of the models, to me, are absolutely fine. They don't look out of place. They don't look goofy. Um, helmets, uh, I kept to all Mark Seven helmets because um, you do get a couple of Corvus uh, Mark VI helmets in the Devastator Squad box set, which I love. But I'm stockpiling my Mark VI helmets because I want um, I want to do something with those later on as another project. So uh, I used a couple of much older uh, Mark VII helmets on some of these. So no targeters, as you can see. I mean, this this helmet was, I think, from an assault marine box um, that leftovers, you know, that I had, which was probably from like 20 or 25 years ago. But the proportions haven't really changed in the helmet, so it works absolutely fine. As with the tactical marines, the Mark VII helmets don't fit beautifully into the uh, into the sockets. There is contact, so you can definitely glue them, but you won't have as much freedom to position the head. So if you want to put the head kind of looking along the barrel of your gun, sometimes it's, it's a bit tricky to, to fully achieve that. So just bear that in mind when you're doing it. Um, so yeah, a little bit of extra work comparison to the uh, tactical marines with shaving off the you know the, the the backpack mounts and everything just so they could come in close enough but really easy i mean if it was hard i wouldn't be doing it i'm not someone who really does really hard conversions uh, necessarily um and uh, the reason why mine tend to be more expensive is i value my time um so you know that kind of magic triangle that people talk about where you can have something quick you can have something easy or you can have something cheap and you can only generally most of the time achieve two of those things well mine definitely are kind of quick and easy that's that's how i work i sacrifice expense um because i place a value on my time i don't get that much time to sit down in the hobby and if i can do something quicker and spend a bit of more money to achieve that i will but you could save a lot of money with 3d printing i mean i hate actually i loathe mentioning 3d printing in my videos but i have to because i get so many comments on it i actually despise 3d printing <laughs> But I can't deny its popularity and the fact that it will save you money. So, I mean, you could probably just print um, Primaris size Devastators straight off. I'm sure there's an STL somewhere for that. And if you want to go down that road, hats off to you. I mean, you'll save money and it'll certainly be quick. Um, so there you go. Um, sergeants. 
So because I built the three, uh, the three extra individuals here, uh, I showed you one already. That's my favourite one, Storm Bolter. And um, forget the loadouts. Obviously, this is I'm not a gamer. I just do what I like the look of and what I like in the lore. And I love Storm Bolters. There is no way that was going to stay on the sprue. I'm afraid. So that's why I've given him one of those. He came out nicely. Uh, second one here, power sword and um, single um, single arm uh, bolt gun. Uh, arm there, yeah, really, really nice. And this guy, chainsword and uh, graph pistol, quite standard that one. Um, obviously, I'm going to do the three complete squads. I'm probably going to build a couple of extra uh, heavy bolters so I can have a full squad of heavy bolters because they are my favourite looking. And I just love the idea of how much firepower that can, can put out. Um, so there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please uh, like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I really do appreciate your support. It all helps the channel to grow. Um, and I just want to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. Um, a lot of people have been so friendly and welcoming uh, for me coming into this. I mean, I've been around the hobby for, well, nearly 30 years, but... I, um, I've never really done anything like this before until, you know, until fairly recently. So I'm quite new to, to this kind of stuff, as you can probably tell, you know, from the quality and the, and the content. But I try and do things that I find interesting myself. And I think that's the best you can do as a creator. Um, so I hope you like, um, hope you like the video, hope you've enjoyed it. And anyone who's considering doing this, but has been on the fence about it, I hope you can learn something from the video and, and you know be satisfied with the results because i think that's what stops people sometimes um you think well is this going to turn out okay well if you watch and you like what you see then hopefully you know you know one way or the other um take care guys i will see you in a future video and um yeah thanks for watching